Welcome to the third season of Privacy Cast. In the podcast series, we bring together some of the most insightful minds in the field of privacy and cyber to discuss the latest developments and trends that impact our digital lives. Whether it's a new threat to online security, emerging tech, or best practices to protect your data, we cover everything in depth. Join us for an engaging, informative session, and let's get going. My name is Akash Singh. I'm the founder of Saru, also the host of Privacy Cast. I am also one of the youngest people to be in IEP Asia Advisory Boards, also the chapter chair for IEP in Bangalore, a privacy consultant by profession. Have been working with Extero closely, and also that's why we have with us Gilberto. So today's topic of the session is how do we navigate through privacy governance in today's difficult privacy landscape. Today we have none other than Gilberto Costa with us, the brain. behind the product at Xtero and today we're going to talk about how do we build on privacy governance look at see the concern is every other person has a concern what do we do there are so many regulations there's so much to do in privacy is it a governance question is it a compliance question what is this question today we're going to talk a lot about it and we're going to ask none other than Gilberto here today so Gilberto over to you for a short introduction hello thanks i'm Gilberto Costa and i work as uh, the director of product management for Xtero the privacy solutions being developing this smart data inventory my experience in privacy is over 6 years and my background is software development so i put together the two things that i love the most which is developing software products and coupled with privacy to help privacy officers around the world and organization to reduce time to compliance and to be successful quickly yeah and i think that's one of the best things to do i think talk to you about privacy governance because when you look at something like smart data inventory also a good case scenario is what do we do with it or what is the organization going to achieve with it? when we look at sdi i think the first question that comes to mind is privacy governance the end result of an sdi is always privacy governance so i will not waste time and i'll ask you that question what is privacy governance what is this governance so everybody talks about it i was today scrolling through knowledge net chapters in the world and everybody was asking what is privacy governance so what is it well some people may have their own definition but i think we have a common understanding about that and privacy governance refers to the framework policies and procedures that a organization or companies puts in place to manage and protect the personal information of individuals and in compliance with applicable privacy laws regulations and industry standards and privacy governance is really important for several reasons. I try to be very concise here but one reason is, is compliance of course. Organizations are subjected to various laws in multiple jurisdictions. Another reason is reputation and trust. Organization that demonstrates strong privacy governance practices they gain trust and confidence from their customers employees and other stakeholders risk management it helps you to manage risk because privacy governance helps organizations to identify assess and mitigate privacy risks associated with the data that your organization collect use storage and disclosure ethical considerations are also important because organizations are responsible for protecting the privacy rights of individuals and more and more regulations are focused on the rights of individuals and of course business benefits because implementing a robust privacy program a privacy framework with the privacy governance that helps you to practice what you say that also benefits organization and this includes gaining competitive advantage by differentiating from competitors through strong privacy posture enhancing customer loyalty and retention which is also important here and fostering innovation by building trust and leveraging data responsibility because data is the new oil but in summary i would say that privacy governance is critical for organization to ensure compliance with privacy laws manage risks protect reputation uphold ethical standards and of course gain benefits in terms of business and from a perspective of a user or individual or a data subject if organization take that into account that will yeah, make a difference for customers yeah i think that is the summary it was exactly what i was looking for as well for me i think i would also kind of answer that question with you so when i look at governance when i have clients and the question comes in terms of so a lot of times what happens is whenever we are having this discussion people come up and they are like the first question is i have a lot of data i have a lot of data and i don't know where the data is so do you think that this question also gets solved in privacy governance do you think yeah i think it's really important because this is a requirements of laws and regulations that requires organization to have an inventory of data you only have an inventory when you know the things that you have where the things are so i don't know where my data is located or stored well 
Yes, there are technology that allows us to locate data and create a robust inventory. And that a strong and robust inventory, data inventory, has to be part of your privacy governance or so privacy program. Sure. So basically, if we use the right smart data inventory, if we do the right tagging in terms of, let's say, there is a database, right? And in that database, if we tag the type of data sources or tag the type of attributes and their purpose, consent, then we can think about a privacy governance model. Are we in cognizance? Yes. Actually, talking about the smart data inventory, we call it smart because it's actually smart. Business users no longer need to know privacy or actually have difficulty to understand privacy, but DPOs and privacy officers, they need to. So what is smart, for example, with a smart data inventory, business users just need to tell the data they have in place and the smart data inventory is smart enough to say, well, this represents a sort of risk for this regulation based on territorial scope, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, and that's part of your privacy governance. You cannot govern if you don't know the risks you are exposed to and how to address those risks based on the data that you hold today. Okay. I think very cognizant because talking to you and hearing you, I'm also getting new questions. I'll probably ask you and probably clarify them for myself as well. How do you generate risk? Basically, when I look at a privacy risk, basically the two things that generate privacy risk for me. One thing that generates privacy risk for me today is when I look at, let's say, a cyber incident event or maybe when I'm doing a general assessment of an organization X, I'm getting these risks or either I'm doing privacy impact assessments. So how do you how do you actually map smart data inventory to finding out these two risks and then decreasing the risk how do you decrease the risk gilberto using sdi very good question i'm happy that you ask that actually and again remember our mission is to reduce time to compliance meaning reducing time dpos and privacy officers and privacy champions is spent in front of a computer doing things so in order to do that we need to have a smart engine so what the smart engine it does is organization creates inventory and say for example well i'm collecting data of job candidates. As an example, my company is established in Portugal and collecting data of job candidates from the UK, from India, from Brazil, from Canada, etc. Okay, that's the answer that business can do. And then I'm collecting name, phone numbers, you name it, data elements. Well, what the smart data inventory does is it triggers regulation based on territorial scope. So by saying I, my job candidates are coming from Brazil, India, Canada, and UK, the system will automatically identify the regulations of that the jurisdiction. And because smart data is it smart enough to know, based on the research, of course, to know how each of these regulations define or treat those data elements. For example, fingerprint is a special category under the GDPR. Maybe it's not under PIPEDA. Maybe it's not under the LGPD. The point I'm trying to make here is we detect the regulation and then based on the elements, we identify one, based on the data element, we identify the sensitivity of the data element and we identify the vulnerability of the data subject. For example, collecting data of elderly individuals, elderly individuals is vulnerable data subject under some specific regulation. So we detect two. One is the vulnerability of the data subject, sensitivity of the data element, and the purpose your organization is processing. Those are baseline risks that we automatically identify. You don't need to ask your business to identify risk. Smart data inventory identifies the privacy risk automatically. By identifying that, you can, of course, it's a pretty good question. And let's say we have kind of identified the type of data sets we have. And today, because the type of customer database we have, if we are a B2C business, or if we are a B2B business, the type of contracts that we have signed with all the entities in the world. So we have some information in our contracts that makes us liable for some laws. So even if I have a smart data inventory, but I don't have a smart legal team still the smart it has to multiply it cannot go reverse are we together here so what i'm yes. trying to say is how can we get the best out of a privacy governance model because a tool is not the solution end of day it has to be everything it has to be holistic the organization has to take the right approach the privacy internal team has to take the right approach the data governance team has to take the right approach the legal team has to take the right approach. What's your thought on that? Well, my thought is, as you said, you don't solve this ju just with one piece of the puzzle. It's a puzzle with many pieces. And one piece is this technology. And the other one is the knowledge. So you need knowledge, experienced people working with you, either privacy officers, internal or experts, consulted companies like Tisaro is a good example. You are a company with a strong expertise in privacy. When you put together one thing, reducing the time to identify risk, because that's the technology can do, as my data inventory can identify the initial risk. But what do I do now? I identified this risk. What are the measures that I took to mitigate this risk? Well, here is where you need to work together with a, a strong 
privacy professionals who have a strong experience to help organization to, yeah, based on this risk, this should be the measure that we put in place. One, to make sure that we reduce risks and eventually to bring benefits to the individuals, to the yeah. benefits that we have. That's a- So basically, whenever I am doing the sessions, and I think, I know you are also a privacy trainer I saw past in your life, Knowledge Academy, I saw on LinkedIn. And I have also been teaching with Knowledge Academy a long time back. So one thing that as trainer to trainer, I have a question to you rather than as a product owner, the trainer to trainer question. If somebody has to think about privacy governance and you have to look at it in a skeleton angle, what are these things that lead to governance? So what would your thought be or what is your thought today? Smart data inventories, because we have to inventorize, we have to build catalogs, we have to do PIA. So what are your thoughts? What are these all the things that if we do together or individually can lead to better privacy governance? Gilberto? That's a very good question. I think that's what we can do together. I mean, when I say you do together, company as a whole with all those pieces of puzzle that I mentioned, we need to, one, educate the company, employees, okay. and create awareness. Training awareness. is, yes, training is one of the key elements under the GDPR. Organizations are obliged to provide training, but training is not simply teaching employees to how to use the tool. It's yeah. creating a privacy awareness, making efficient and practical uh, trainings that allows staff to know how to handle this data. It could be a B2B, it could be a B2C, but if you are touching personal data or if you are interact with data subjects, you need to have a posture, you need to have an attitude. There are many things that are based on technical and organizational measures. And it's really important because when I say technical and organizational measures, we're talking about two types of measures. Technology, yes, is easy to be there to add anonymization, encryption, etc. Those are technical measures. But organizational measures is harder because you touch on people's behavior, you need to create awareness, you need to teach, and then you create the mindset inside the organization that makes people aware of the importance of privacy to the organization and to the data subject. So I would say, I would put this in one word, I would say awareness, two words, awareness and training. Okay, so awareness and training are like the important parts of privacy governance. But the thing is, whenever I am going to, let's say today, whenever there's a question on somebody comes to me and asks, so the question that people ask across the globe is, how do we comply to privacy at least cost? And obviously, which is exactly the same thing as privacy governance, because that's what you need to have. Then only you can comply to GDP or CPR or anything in the world, you need to have a governance module. Otherwise, privacy compliance just means documentation that you've just documented and just left it, which is not the right way. So if, if we have to have privacy compliance, then we have to have a governance model. And when I'm looking at a governance model, then mentioning that, okay, training and awareness. So basically what you're trying to also say is that the team in marketing is taking the right decision when it comes to that step. Team in sales is doing the right decision. But what about product companies? Gilbert? If it's a product-based company, then how do you see privacy governance? I am not talking talking about teams. I'm not talking about process anymore. I'm just talking about products. How do you think, or can we, let's say tomorrow using a smart data inventory, directly plug it to product? What should we do? Here's the thing. First of all, regardless of the industry, there are some requirements that organizations need to do. But when talking about technology, we should focus on protecting personal data of users and customers. It's not only the customer, the users, anyone touching the tool. Organizations need to take into account one thing that is very simple when they design software is privacy by design principle. Privacy by design means that when we design a tool, the first thing that we have in mind is the privacy of the data subjects. Meaning, for example, I think many people know this story of the case that a stalker killed a actress in the US seven decades ago because he was able to get into the system and get the address of this individual. That was problem with the technical measure. There's another case of a police officer, a female police officer in the United States reported that she would be harassed because she was so pretty and their colleagues were looking to her employee profile several times a day. And this was only possible because that software has a complete and reliable audit log. So if the tool didn't have a audit log, the case wouldn't go to the course. So when we design tools, we need to think about audit log. We need to think about the security. I need to understand how the data will be deleted when it's no longer used. So privacy by design was created by Anna Kavukian in Canada. And I, I could go through all the topics, but it would take much time. But just to say this, privacy by design and the fall is one of the principles required under the GDPR. We developing software, we need to take into account privacy by design. Yeah, and I think, by the way, Gilberto, I'll tell you this. I kind of went through a discussion. I feel I have learned a lot. 
lot. We are also towards the end of our session. We just want to thank everyone who's hearing this session. Thank you guys for being with us. All for everybody listening to this. Thank you. And a special thanks to Gilberto for taking his precious time out and talking to us. So Gilberto, thanks to you and over to you for a short thank you note. Thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this webinar. I just wanted to say this in my final words. It's really important for organizations when creating this privacy program to maintain transparency with individuals in how they process that data. I'm really happy to see companies like Saro promoting and creating awareness across many, many, many companies. And this is my passion is privacy, is to help organizations to reduce time to compliance and thank you for your time, guys. Thank you, Gilberto. And guys, we will see you soon in the next episode.